can only ever be where you are right now. Bottle Drip Podcast. It's the major investment in your life, right? The journey will always be your journey. To Lexus P. Welcome, my man. How are you? Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm great, man. It's uh, Sunday morning here, and this is super impromptu because you're in New York right now. Mm-hmm. Saturday. It's like 6 30. Saturday, 6.30 p.m. And I just like, I just woke up like maybe two hours ago. I was editing the podcast from yesterday. Mm-hmm. And I get this message coming in. Hey, man, want to sit down and podcast? Absolutely. Hell yeah, let's go. Word, word. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, this is, uh, this is an honor and I thank you very much for coming on. We're going to dive into some shit today. I've got so many questions I want to get into your brainchild about. But before we do, because it's your first time on the potter, do you yep. want to give the listeners and the people listening a bit of an idea about uh, what you're about, what you think they need to know about you, and uh, we'll go and we'll go in after that. Uh, well, you know, it's um, you know, we we, I'm more of a I, I teach dating advice. I taught women. I taught I taught men, and I did pick up like every other dude, and now I started teaching women, and um, and so you know, I sort of have a similar philosophy that you that you have in terms of um, stoicism combining that with dating and stuff like that that's why that's why i pretty much started watching a channel i'm like i like what he's doing um and you know you could sense people's energy then again you can't trust appearances you know what i'm saying but, <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> kidding that was issue though but um but i, I like <laughs> I, I like the old overall vibe of, of the video and stuff like that but generally though i'm just i'm just a very curious person you know and i like to I, I like to channel everything to everything that I do towards one interest, and 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 you come up with new concepts. You know, it's like playing with Legos. You know, mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah, man, and that's yeah, what yeah. I love about your mindset towards life. It's very creative. Even that little Lego thing there, like I've never even heard anyone describe uh, the experience yeah. of life in general like that. So that's awesome. Yeah, and it, it's like it, it, it's like you're trying to build a dragon. But uh, but you use different you use different Legos and then and, and like and that's all of the different bits of information from learning about the human evolution, learning about spirituality, and we all come mm. to the same conclusion, but with different colors. Mm, that's nice. Yeah, I like Legos. that, man. I like that. Yeah. And like you said, something huge already from the beginning that is probably the most interesting thing to me personally. So it's where I want to begin. I want to begin with how you transitioned into primarily coaching women because, as you can probably know, most of my audience are dudes that come to me because I'm teaching them at least very heavily in the beginning about how to handle their social and romantic side of their temple. And, you know, at first I had like a 1%, if that, uh, female percentage of my audience and they were really just girls that knew me from my photography. (laughs) Yeah. But you're the complete reverse. So I find that fascinating. I find that absolutely fascinating. And I want to see where we have similarities in terms yeah. of principles, in terms of lessons that we teach. So first off, how did you even get into that transition? And then what have you learned through being a dating coach for women, man? Yeah, I mean, generally, it's all about listening to yourself um, and, and, and listening to other people's feedback as a secondary source, you know? Um, but generally though, I was already, I was trying to, I was feeling my way, literally feeling my way through this, like seeing what do I like the most, what captivates my attention. And you just, I would just notice, interesting, this, when I do this, I somehow focus more, Hmm. you know, or when I do that, I sometimes lose focus. I don't like that. You know, I was feeling my way through it, you know? Um, and generally though, what started happening is that. When I found you, I was only teaching guys. You know what I'm saying? And I had like, mm. you know, I had like two, one thousand, two thousand subscribers, and and I had a vision in my head where um, I would wake up in the morning, you know, two girls next to me, and um, mm-hmm. and I wake up, I go to my computer and and, and and look at the subscribers that I have, but I also I look at the feedback. I wasn't just looking at how many subscribers. I was looking at people messaging me how much I changed their lives and stuff like that. And that was a vision of mine. I, I literally saw having different channels and 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 converging my interest in that. And then one day a, l- a girl told me, and she was like, oh, you should make a channel for women. And I was like, what the fuck are you doing in this channel? Go somewhere else. You know, I didn't mm-hmm. pay attention, you know, because I'm like, what is she asking me to teach women for? I don't know, you know. I didn't know anything about women, to be honest with you. I just knew how to get them, you know. 
And um, and then one day, you know, I was like, you know what? Let me just make one video. Fuck it. Let me just make one video, you know, because for women, for the guys, I used to edit my videos like you do. Not as good as you do, because you're fucking you pretty goddamn good at that. You know, I could tell you. Appreciate that, man. Thank yeah, you. you folk, I, I, what I like about it is that you have a process and, and you take pride in each step. You know, that's 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 the kind of focus that 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 you that 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 signals that your whole being is into it. It's more of an expression of who you are. And that's amazing. Anyways, um, it wasn't for me, you know, and I was like, you know, what? let me just make a video for God, for women and see what happens. You know, I made one video and 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 I was like, you know, what? let me just go to Matthew Hussey. Let me look at his most viewed videos and let me give it a similar title and let's see where it goes. And 60,000 views in one week, you know, what was it? It's it was um hit, well Matthew's video was five ways to know a guy likes you instantly and I was like let me just change it up five instant ways to find out if he likes you you know <laughs> and, and I got the views and so it got the views and what was the response like how did was, girls respond to that um I was shocked um it, 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 you know because it wasn't sixty thousand I'm I, I I lied I was thinking about when I first made a video about how to stop smoking weed. <laughs> <laughs> but this one was was it, I was getting like 600 views in in like three days, and that was a lot because it was only one video, you know. So yeah. I was like, "Holy shit, this this is like getting viewed and stuff like that." And and then I was like, "You know, let me make one of a video." And I was like, "You know what? Let me buy Robert Greene's book, The Art of Seduction, to see what the hell this mm. dude's talking about." And I was like, "Well, you know what? Let me just read what he talks about in Art of Seduction and teach it." And I was converging my theory of pickup with his. His, his his theories of seduction and, and 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 it just comes together it really comes together and most pickup dudes wouldn't read that pickup dudes because it, it it's it's some random dude talking about seduction some you know like he mm. doesn't even practice How, no man when you read that book and then you start applying it as a woman you see results and i was like you know what let me just teach women because you know they it's 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 an untapped market because a lot of guys that are coached for women they wanted to be. They wanted to be coaches for women, so they read how to talk to guys, how to do this. You know, so they just read books on how to talk to guys. I come from the other route. I come how Hold to up. get the girl. Hold hmm? up, pause. I'm saying you got a lot of beeping in your background. Oh, it's tender. A... My fault. Tinder. Hey, go on silent, bro. Go on silent. Yeah, I'm on my purpose, girl. Sorry about that. Um, hey, hey, continue. And, uh, yeah, so. Um, mm -hmm. What were you saying? Yeah, continue. So oh, you okay. are finding that, yeah, there's a lot of guys that maybe are dedicated to coaching women, but... Mm -hmm. But the problem is that, first of all, they're single. They're taken, right? A lot of these guys are married. Mm. And and so how could you, you know, how could you continually get... How could you update yourself with the dynamic nature of, of, of dating nowadays? You know what I'm saying? So right. they, don't, they, don't, they don't have updated. They don't know about how flaky women can be because they have so many fucking options. You know, they don't know about how how what it feels like to be a guy who doesn't want that want the girl. You know what I'm saying? Because when if you you know this, when you started when you study mindfulness and, and you observe yourself and you're trying to improve on your game, you are you literally become very aware of your inside and how you think, you know. And so you sort of are able to read how it feels like to lose interest, how you know, so so that mindful perspective it, mm. it, it just, just, just gave me an understanding into guys. You know what I'm saying? And the guys that yeah. women struggle with. You know, and yeah, and, and and it's just a unique perspective because a lot of guys who teach women, they just teach women. So they don't have a deep, a deep. They don't, they don't have a, a strong roots in, in the subject of of social dynamics, power, spirituality. That you just cannot have it by just knowing dating. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You gotta go the long route. You gotta be. You gotta have the long route to get good. So what you're really talking about there is that you got a real perspective because you got not only boots on the ground, you're in it, right? Mm -hmm. You're talking about these guys that uh, maybe that they're married. Yeah, actually, that's a really interesting thing you brought up. A lot of the dating coaches that are men for women, yeah, for sure, are either taken or have been in, for a really long period of time, have been in six, seven, ten-year relationships. Then they come out and then they start wanting to teach women. And while I'm not saying they don't have and I'm, not sure, I'm sure you're not saying this either, they don't have something to offer. No, it's do. very different to someone like you or I that are boots on the ground in the sense that we have real context on the day-to-day, -day, have had for years and years at this point of what mm -hmm. it's like. You're talking about guys that... Uh, you, you work, if you work with guys that are struggling, it gives you the other side of the moon, so to speak, mm -hmm. when yeah. it comes to now flipping your perspective 
to give advice to girls. Mm -hmm. So on that same line, when this video came out and you made this transition and realized, holy shit, there's a market here for me. There's a untapped resource. This fountain is just like exploding in the business aspect and feel free to dive into this. However, which way you want to go. How did you start to curate and cultivate your ability to teach women? How did that change for you? It, it, it nothing changed because, um, you know, you see, if you go about it to teach women and and, and to and to gain subscribers, you're gonna you're gonna you, you're gonna you, if you have fear of losing your subscribers, you're already not gonna be yourself. You know, so. and you already are not unique. Even if you're trying to be unique, people could sense it. I didn't give a fuck, you know, because I was already teaching guys. You know, I'm like, I don't care if you're mad or if I curse or if I call you, if, or if I call you like, I don't know, like, I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo, bitch, listen up, man. And I don't say, I wouldn't say bitch, you know, but under the right context, I would say that. And, and, and most dating coaches for women, they can't say it because they don't practice pickup. They can't. They don't know how to talk to a woman without getting her angry or without offending them. They don't know how to be. Mm. They don't know how to be like, like, like sexually playful without offending them or going to jail, you know. Mm. So. With me, it wasn't that I was, it, it wasn't any transition. What The only transition that it was, it was I, I, I began to, I began to get deeper into, into reading books on seduction and, and, and teaching what yeah. I learned. And I, like teaching women did definitely get me to Robert Greene. But generally though, like the only difference, I'll be honest, the only difference was, how can I say this? The only difference is, is that I was able to talk about more subjects. That's the thing. I was able to talk about more subjects, more things that I couldn't, I really felt like the guys weren't resonating with, the women were. And the funny thing is that the shit that the women were resonating with was with the dark tactics, like fucked up. Yeah. yeah. Dive into that because that's that's something that you've been big on and some of your really, the videos that you've got major traction have mm -hmm. to do with these dark psychological things. Dive in on that. Yeah, it's funny how people are attracted to that, huh? And, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the thing is that it's it's like the dark tactics are the things that people do when they don't like you, and they just don't notice it. For we we've all been there where a woman we love a woman, and they're with you, and then the next day it's like there's fucking cold. It's like it's like it's like she doesn't even care for you no more. It's like you don't even exist, you know. Women do that, not because they're evil, but because they have so many options. You see, if, if they were conscious of what they were doing, you would call it dark tactics, you know, be because literally you're baiting the guy. Right. But you're not baiting him because you want to you because you want to be mean. Some of them because you have too many fucking options. Mm. You know, it's just too many options. And so what I learned is that if you just reverse engineer that process. Notice what happens when you don't like a girl. You see, a lot of guys, they don't even pay. They just pay attention when they like a girl. No, no, no. Pay attention when you don't like a girl. Notice what you're doing differently. You know? In there, you'll see your dark tactics. That indifference, that coldness that makes people afraid of losing you. So those would be, like, when you're talking to the girl, nat the natural instinct is to pay attention, to be there. You know? But what happens when you don't like a girl? You know, you're, 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 you're less there. No, it's not that you're less there, but there, there is a, there is a sense of like, of like, all right, let's, let's hurry this up. But it, it's, you got to find that balance because you can't just be neglectful. Right. But at the same time, you can't be too, you can't be too warm. So one of the things that I learned is never complimenting a woman. Right. Because you, when you don't like a girl, you don't compliment her. I mean, you don't compliment that girl. Right. Mm. You, you don't compliment her when you when you get her number um, when when you go out with her and the day finishes you don't text her unless she texts you and if she doesn't text you that day you take seven days to text her and ask her out things that it's counterintuitive for for in the pickup community right it's counterintuitive they usually tell you text her the next day if she doesn't respond say something funny right be playful right that shit women don't do that shit man. The hottest girls, they don't do none of that shit. They're, they're, they're fucking savages. They're cold. And that coldness is what attracts you, you know? And the reason why I say it is because I talk to them. I coach them, you know? They don't, girls don't call me because, you know, he's, you know, my guy's paying attention to me, you know? They don't pay me for that. They pay me because, you know, my guy, you know, he's ignoring me. He's flaky. He's not being acting. Like, I, I mean, I wish it was the other way around, man. But it, it, people, unfortunately, that's what get people react to, man. I react to that too. You too. 
Maybe. That's interesting, man. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting. Yeah. It's yeah. You said, you said a lot of interesting things there. And so I'm interested to find out how has this affected your personal life then? You know, obviously keep details wherever you want to keep details. Oh, yeah. You don't um, need to dive into anything. Like I say, you don't need to give me the color of her eyes. But <laughs> how is this journey? Ha <laughs> the dad ad. How is this, uh, how is this journey affected your personal life? And because, hang on, I haven't even really asked the time frame on this. When was it that you made the switch, the transition to coaching women? Well, I still teach guys. You know, oh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. When that, yeah. Um, when that was, angle came in. Yeah, yeah. It was, um, let me see. You, I get confused with the years. It was the, it was like November of 2016. So not that long. No, 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 no. It, no, it doesn't no, feel so that long. And how old are you? 28 28 spring yeah. chicken so yeah so you're yeah so you're growing through it still so have you did you notice a major change in your personal life when this extra angle and this extra perspective of holy shit i've got this in completely different audience completely different angle coming at me how did your personal life get affected by that oh big time because it, it, it showed me a reality that was eluding me it was right in my face i didn't see it you see, sometimes it's not the fact that you're blind. Blindness is a lack of perspective. That's why when people say you're blind, it's because you have zero perspective, you know? And, and a few things brings you perspective. Meeting people who have different perspective and time. And meeting people with different perspective, time, and constantly questioning your beliefs, you know? And experiences as well. But what was I saying? I'm sorry. Oh, so I was just asking about you know, when you got this angle of the new female side of your oh. audience now, did that change your personal life in regards yeah. to social, romantic, or even more deeper, even more spiritually as well? Yeah. It, it, well, not as big an impact as it was. You see, it, 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 made me, it made me not be as resentful to women because I started to understand their nature a little bit more. Because a lot of guys, it's, they're, 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 they've, been so, they've been so hurt that anything wrong that happens feels like a personal attack. It just mm-hmm. does because if you feel like, oh, this shit again, this shit again, this shit again. What I started learning through 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 all of this is, is that people are people have just people are have two parts of their nature that they themselves don't understand, even when they're doing it. You know, um, generally though, what I learned is unfortunately you got to play the game. You know, you got to play the game. You know, it's it's if if because if you're if you, if a woman's showing you interest, doesn't mean you should. You, sh- you should show interest as well. Sometimes you want to do that because you were longing for somebody to listen to you. You're longing to surrender to somebody. Like when you with your parents, you could all be open to your parents. You could tell. You could. You could. You could be like. You could cuddle with your mom, and then she won't judge you. So we want that in in a woman. She. They don't want that. They. They want the father who's not there. You know. It's fucked up though, man, because that means that you gotta, you gotta, you gotta grow up from that fantasy of wanting security in somebody else. Mm. You know, you, 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 and we all, and that's what the desire for love is—that warmth that we don't have ourselves. You know. So you were starting to find that personally as you started to meet more girls as this was coming along. Yeah, because it, it, it primar- primarily in the rejections, because there's there's a big a big you could you gotta. How you react to rejection says a lot about you. We ignore it because it's so painful, or or or, or we're so focused on learning the tactics that we fail to, to to look at our lack of our emptiness and and see the reason why. You can't focus on the rejection. You got to realize that the reason why you feel this pain, pain in reality to me is creative energy that's not unleashed. You know, creative energy that needs to be released. And that you're just not paying attention. You can't distract yourself out of that pain. You got to release it through either acceptance or redirecting it towards an art or something you find purposeful. Women, unfortunately, you can't use, you can't, because we use women, you can't use women to relieve of that stress because they're too goddamn inconsistent. They're, 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 too, they're, 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 they're too random. You can't expect them to do that. And that's why you got a lot, a lot of hurt guys. And so learning all of this gave me that personal responsibility to not depend on them no more. You know, mm. even, even even when they act interested, you can't rely on that. And it, and, it, and it's not that you're being that you're hurt or that you're being negative. You're just being realistic. It is what it is, man. Mm-hmm. That's interesting, man. And you mentioned hurt guys there. 
Is that something you come across a lot? What do you mean? And to what and to what degree? Oh, you mentioned herd guys, mm-hmm. and because that's something that I want you to define what herd is for you, mm-hmm. and also what you see that looks like and how that manifests in the guys that come to you. What does that hurt look like? Yeah, well, I could talk about from my experience. Usually, yeah, I am, go for it. Yeah, I, I am the one that will be hurt, you know? And all of this is just my own way of processing things, my own healthy way, you know? And um, generally, hurt isn't pain, you know, because pain, and non, hurt isn't, yeah, isn't pain. It's your resentful, is, is your resent towards reality. That's what pain, that's what really hurt is, is the fact that, because a woman could dump you, but you don't resent that. You just accept it and you're in pain, but you just accept it. Then what I'm talking about is, is, is when you make it an, an, an image out of all women, like, like yeah. the generalizations, the generalizations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, like all women are fucking assholes, you know? And now suddenly, you know, you could say that some women were asshole, but all women is, is you, is your pain. The, the, that all thing in reality is, 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 is emotion that's clouding your perception. You know, mm. and so because of that, because you're not aware of that general when you generalize things of that bias, because you're so deep in your emotions, other people who who's been in there and will look at you, they'll tell you, but you can't, you you don't have perspective, you know, you don't have the time, mm. you don't have someone who you meet who gives you a different perspective, you know, you don't have that experience, that epiphany moment that wakes you up, you know, so oh fuck, I forgot what I was saying. Well, we're just talking about her guys. Yeah, how yeah, that yeah. manifests, and you're relating that to your own journey of being. Yeah, hurt. exactly. So, so a big part also of being hurt is that you just begin to tell, you just begin to give, you just begin to give a reason why they hurt you, rather than just them living their lives, rather than maybe this happened or that happened. You begin to say it's because of this, it's because of that, it's because of this, it's because of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's not all about you. When people are hurt, everything's about them. Everything that happens is about them. You've been an asshole because of because you, you because of me. You know. There's no now, self-responsibility there. Mm-hmm. It's a self-absorption. You know that's why mm-hmm. narcissism is. Narcissism are people who are self-absorbed and never developed a sense of self. You know, and and so and so everything you say hurts them. And the thing about narcissistic people is that they are very good at listening to people, but not to listen. But to find information to use against you. That's why they listen. And you can mm. see they're, they're, they're probing for weakness, for empathy, you know? Mm. Anyways, yeah. yeah. You, you mentioned something real cool there that I know you want to dive in and I want to dive in on with you is sense of self. Mm-hmm. Sense of self. And because you know, we've had one other chat before this, I think it was like yeah, three yeah. months ago, maybe yeah, four yeah. months ago. And that was a great session, which we dived into a lot of your uh personal psychological ideas of self self and a lot of Even things I get to do with that. See? Yeah, hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> gotta be humble. So so let's just start right there. What is sense of self to you? What does that mean? And how has that been cultivated for you? Well okay that's that's okay so a sense of yeah self- unpack that it's a big yeah. thing big question so take it where you want. Yeah a sense of self is let me see well, oh, fuck. That's 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 a. We could go with with okay. So usually when people are hurt, they don't have a sense of self because other people become objects of themselves. They become an extension of themselves. So when you're sad and you have a kid, you have a kid because you like self-esteem. So you have a kid in the hopes that if he grows up, he makes you feel good. Mm. You know. So a sense of self is 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 having an identity from where you derive pleasure from. You know, lack of sense of self is is needing things to make you happy. You know, that desire for a woman to 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 validate you is a lack of sense of self. And that's why you're so absorbed in your own problems and you're not able to read other people because you're just so absorbed in finding happiness through other people. So when you look at people, you don't look at them. You look at them through the lens of your emotions. So you can't read them. You're always causing misunderstandings. Nothing's worse than unnecessary problems. And one of the biggest problems is um, is misunderstandings, a lot of the conflicts, you know? And so having a sense of self is, 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 is oh man, I, I will go with a self image with having a, a, a self image that you see and that you strive towards when things go wrong, you go back to that thing that makes you happy, that makes you happy. So not something that people could control. For example, for me, 
Because I know I'm talking a lot. Sometimes I feel like I don't make sense when I say things. You no, know? you're making sense. Please continue. Don't even don't filter at all. Keep this okay. coming. This is gold. Yeah, thank you. Um, usually, um, like for example, like um, you see, a lot of people's sense of self is in, is inside of them, in form of creative energy. You know, humans are creative. Humans are 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 bottle are potential create creative energy, like a bottles of potential. You know, and and and. So for me, for example, like I remember, like even two months ago, funny enough, um, I I would still feel anxious before a girl texting me, or or I would still I would be like, fuck, I need to I need to bang a girl today, you know. Mm-hmm. Even well knowing all of this, you know what I'm saying? It's just human nature. You can't escape human nature. And and I was reading Robert Greene's book Mastery. Um, Mastery. Yeah, yeah, and, I got that exact same <laughs> copy as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and something that he said is that is that you is that what you got to follow your natural inclinations when you were a little kid you had a thing that you did repetitively you notice you had visceral reactions to things like you just enjoy doing that and you didn't like doing that you 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 sort of you you were able to focus on this and not on that and I, I was like all right those are things inside of you that were pre-verbal nobody put that in your head for some reason it was just part of you for some reason I was attracted to spirituality. For some reason, I was attracted to drawing. I would draw and I would not stop drawing. I don't know why, but it was just part of that. It was pre-verbal. Nobody told you to do that. It's just, it was part of who you are. And so that part of who you are is an energy. And that energy directs your focus. Again, it's pre-verbal. You know, you don't have words for that. It just takes you, it's like a channel. You know, mm-hmm. what happens is that 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 inner voice in the form of a feeling um, is, 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 is stunted. It's, it's about other people's suggestions by pain, by the desire to please other people. Right. And so you lose yourself. And so rather than looking inside for guidance, you look on the outside for guidance. And usually those people who are guiding you are guiding you towards their self-interest, not yours. And when you finish doing all of that shit, you find out you have nothing left. And they have everything, you know what I'm saying? So it's mm. having a sense of self is having a, a, a direction that you want to go in life. It's not an image. It's not a it's not a, a, a fucking a caricature. It's a feeling, you know, and that you can easily go back to when things go wrong. It's more like presence in the moment. You're in the moment. You focus on that, you know. So is it, having a sense of self is so many things that, that but for me, it's more more like an energy. And, and a lot of people don't know who they are and the way they find themselves. You see, it's not about, see, well, you could rediscover yourself at any point in life, you know, at 40, 50, 60, because that desire to draw will still be in you, even in your 40s, 60s, 70s, you know. So when you're 60 and you start drawing, you'll notice that that focus returns. But if you're not paying attention to that, if you're not paying attention to noticing when your attention just get, is, is, is raptured, you're going to lose that moment. And you don't notice that you were speaking to yourself, but you just weren't paying attention because you were worried about the bills. You were worried about that girl that flaked on you. You were worried about that. But if you have moments of solitude through meditation, reading different books, and you start noticing what do you like to do, there's no need to get coffee for to do that shit. It's like a super highway of energy that was already there. You just you're on the wrong path. You know that's why people feel confused and depressed. Dude, I started drawing right and. All of that shit, neediness for women, is gone. It's, it's just mm. gone. Today, I really want to go on a date today. That's fine. But but outside of that, like it's like my attention just goes deep into that. You know, it's like the day. It's like the day is too short now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And and with this sense of self, and you're talking about the energy, feeling that it is for you. Where is that leading you now in life? You see, it, it's it, the the thing is, is that a big part. I don't, I don't know, but I feel the momentum. You see, it's mm. all about following. It, 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 I, it's more like it's like it's like it's like a flower, right? You don't know how this flower looks like, but it's it's opening up. You just gotta, sure. you just gotta, yeah. You you just gotta keep working, keep doing deliberate practice, keep focusing on your craft, keep following your curiosities. You know, like if I if I'm suddenly like interested in reading, I don't know, reading a book about you know like a brief history of mankind. You know, there is something. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. <laughs> there you go. Hey, 
<laughs> yeah, great, great, great minds think alike, right? <laughs> One of the greatest books of all time. Shout it's out amazing, to Yuval right? Noah Harari. Yeah. Sapiens, 100%. And his uh, follow-up, Homo Deus. Yeah, yeah, yeah incredible. It, it's, it's incredible, man. And, 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 and you don't know why you want to read that, right? But the point is, just do it. You know, because you don't there. It's like you're there's like an inner guidance system that's building this person for you. You you can't see it, but you can feel it. How do you know it's going well? Because it excites you. Now, we're not saying not to do things that don't excite you because you have, there are necessary things you have to do. But you know that, you know, so you know what not and not to do. You know what I'm saying? And so following this, it's like Da Vinci. It's, it's, it's my favorite. He's my favorite guy in history. Yeah, you mentioned him to me on the ground the other day. Um, and I was just like an idea that popped in my mind that I wanted to get your thoughts on mm-hmm. what influence he's had on you. Because when I started reading, you see, I'm, I'm a big part of immersing myself in people, immersing myself to gain their mentality using mirror neurons. Because when you immerse yourself in someone and you admire them, your brain takes in more, takes in the nonverbal, takes in the subtlety, the subtleties. It's all, all at a non-verbal level. And the reason why I started reading um, 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 about Leonardo is because Robert Greene said that mastery was based on Leonardo da Vinci, you know? And I was like, mm. well, if something in me resonates with mastery, then something in me will resonate with da Vinci's biography. So then I, I got the audio book because I couldn't read the book. I was I can't focus that well with that book. So it's I was like, too you know, dense. it's very dense. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. Very, it's very dense. So the, listening to the audiobooks for some reason makes it so much better. Mm. Started so listening to it, and I went to Amsterdam. I would listen to that book the whole time. And the thing about Da Vinci is that it, it wasn't a coincidence. You know, it, it, everything made sense. It, it, the reason why he was so great is because he deeply and he was very aware of his tendencies of what he liked and what he didn't like and he went at it with 100 percent intensity you know and 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 what i like about that is that he brought a lot of studies into one place he brought science and art together or bringing Mm. dating and spirituality together you know and then he started learning about hydraulics the study of water right and, and then and he had an obsession with curls, with, with hair curls. And he started noticing that hair curls is very similar to the waves in the water, right? And that's why, mm. he, that's why he started studying water because it reminded him of curls, you know? And, and like, why would you want to learn about fucking water, dude? But guess what? Studying hydraulics then led him to learning how to create different, learning how to create war machinery. He started learning how water, it's just like, like curiosity. He's just followed those curiosities and everything came together. The key is, is, is though, is to do it for the curiosity, not for the outcome, you know, because all of those, all of those findings, he wasn't, he, his intention wasn't to find for anyone to find it. Like his studies of, of, of anatomy, he used to dissect people so that he could understand the proportions better. Right. And he would draw the, 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 the human body when, when it was dissecting the first of history of somebody who was able, who had, who was a skilled craftsman who had a deep understanding of geometrical patterns, a deep understanding of painting, drawing, all of those years of 40 years experience, and then he would draw the human anatomy, of course it's gonna lead to beautiful works, to, to understanding the body better. He even understood the heart, that it was that that, that, that the body almost circulated, the, 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 like there was a circulation, not, not, not that the body created blood, it circulated. And the way that he found that was because he loved analogies. Like he loved comparing the flow of water and how it affected the heart, you know. So it's mm. a, so so he was it, it was like he would learn one subject and bring it to that subject, learn one and bring it to that, right? And it's like a tree. It create. It's like everything made sense. Like everything was connected, you know. So that's what I'm like. So now I'm like I right, like I'm learning art right now, right? Because I love drawing. Where might this go? I don't know, right? But you just do it, you know, because. The process of doing it makes you happier. And at the end, there's something great there. You just don't know. You just got to give your, all of your attention to it. What are you drawing? Uh, well, right now I'm drawing like um, I'm just uh, I'm, I'm taking it slow. I'm learning the fundamentals. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I'm learning how I'm learning. I'm trying to get my hand, my hand eye coordination long, drawing straight lines, drawing circles. Um, That's just hard, man. 
straight lines is a hard thing to do. It, it is hard. It is hard. But what I do is like when I'm listening to like when I'm watching a game, I'll draw lines, I'll draw circles, get my hand coordinated to it. I'll notice when I draw, I struggle with one stroke. Then I'll just focus on doing those kind of strokes, you know, and, and, and right. I, I could do that for a long time. Right. And you just find that's like a flow thing for you. Like that's a mm-hmm. flow activity that someone like Mihai Csikszentmihalyi actually speak. Cause I, we, we will go into more with your obsession with books because that's something that you and I have a, uh, brothership in yeah. right? learning from books and that type of thing. But, um, I'm not even sure where that, where that thought line was going. Yeah. Compl- you're Cause my books. mind completely. My mind completely went to books then. Fuck it. We'll go into books now. And yeah. we'll get, I'm sure it'll pop back up in a second. But um, so, yeah, with books, actually, you said something about craftsmanship. So there's two things, actually, that you said that I need to park in my mind. Let's start with books, though. And we'll come back to craftsmanship because it'll probably come up organically. You've spoken a lot on Robert Greene and how he led you, led you to uh, Da Vinci. But in general... I know you're really big on books. You already, you already dropped the Sapiens, right? So, what is it about books? And you have such a creative take on things in general. Just hearing you speak about how you like to dive in on someone's actual being and on someone's actual personality. And when you were describing the hair curls mm-hmm. and the waves that mm-hmm. Da Vinci was making, I'm like listening to you say that and going, "Well, this just sounds like D." And so it's obvious that you, you're, it's not just like you're just saying that. It's like, I know that's what you're actually like. So it's, it's quite interesting how you've been able to go in on someone's being, derive something from that, incorporate it into yours. And now you've taken that into this day and age. And I think that's something from learning from old world shit, right? From the old world wisdom, from people like Lao Tzu 2,500 years ago, Da Vinci, however many years ago that was, um, you know, Marcus Aurelius and the meditations, et cetera, et cetera. So is that something that you get from books? And if not that specifically, what in general do you get from books and how do you apply that into your life? It's more, it's, it, the thing is that when I was younger, um, I never had good influences. Not, not, that, not, not that I lived with a bunch of criminals. Mm. People. You know, I came, you know, from a poor background. So, you know, it's obvious that people, I, I didn't know what it was to, you know, live a life. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So when, when, when I was, when I, when I was doing my YouTube channel for, for men, particularly, um, I, 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 I didn't have any other route, but to, but to learn how to, you know, market, how to make websites, all that sort of stuff. But it wasn't, it wasn't part of me and it's still not part of me today, to be honest with you. But yeah. I needed inspir- I needed to believe in something. I needed somebody. I needed to believe, you know. And 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 so the way I did it was, I was like, you know what? I can't find a real mentor because I'm I don't I don't have anything to offer. I'm not disciplined. I'm not organized, you know. And plus, I, I'm 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 a little too shy about asking them to be their mentor. So I was like, you know what, man? I rather just read books, you know. And mm. I and and I and I rather and so I, what I realized is that read one book. If if you notice you like a book and, and that it, it touches you, read that shit. Keep reading that book. There's a reason why you love that book. One time is can you, you hear me? Right? For like five seconds, yeah. You you dropped yeah. off at one time I was reading a book. Yeah. I will time yeah, the book was Psycho Cybernetics by Maxwell Mott. And the reason why I got that book is because my friend, I was you know those bad days will pick up when you're just depressed, you're like, fuck man, you know, these ho- man, man, these hoes, man, they don't love me, man. And my friend was like, Look, <laughs> read this book. <laughs> I was like, read this book. And I was like, wow, and it was like that changes your self image. And I started reading it and I was like, Holy shit, like this really works. You know, and, and I just kept reading it because I, I like I just ha- I used to be a Bible teacher before, you know. And something about being a okay. Bible teacher is that you read one book. That's the Bible, you know, and I learned that if the more you read a book, the more you, you get out of it. So I was like, you know, let me apply that to this. Let me just read that book and just kept reading it, kept reading it, kept reading it. And then I started reading about um, reading about Robert Greene. And, and what I noticed is that if you keep reading the same author's book, you can get into their mindset. You get in their heads. And, and again, mirror neurons. You could begin to think the way they think, you know. And so I was I was like, you know what? Let me read biographies now, you know, because I was 25 and I was and I wasn't making money. So I was like, I need somebody who started late and did something so I could really believe I could do it. 
you know? So I started reading Arnold Schwarzenegger's biography. I started reading Richard Branson's biography. I needed mm. to know that success wasn't a thing that just happened. I needed to see their failures. You know, and I, I, I needed to see them struggle. I needed to see that. That's why I liked read. I liked looking at Da Vinci's earlier paintings because you could clearly see there were some flaws. And I'm like, ah, mm-hmm. oh, this guy was human. I'm like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So that means that he was normal. He wasn't just the Mona Lisa, you know. And so, you know, reading that allows your brain to 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 deploy the program because, dude, we all been programmed to believe that success is a God given gift. And the, re- and the way people know, and the way I know you've been programmed is because of when you ask them, could you, could you ever become as good as, as Donatello or as good as Michael Jordan? They, they'll say, I wasn't born to do that. It's not that, it's not that some people cannot be Jordan because of physically, but they don't understand how fast you can learn, you know, because mm. on something. And the, re- and the reason why people don't, the reason why people don't want them to believe in themselves is because that means they'll have more competition. They don't want them to believe in themselves. They don't want them to believe that they could do anything they set their minds to. So, of course, mm. they'll say he was God-given. Heck, even saying he's a God, he was his gifts are from God, it brings more audience. So, of course, you know, I'll admire you because of because I can't do it, so I'll vicariously live through you. Sure. I need to break through that. So I was reading biographies all day. And, yo, I'm telling you, that shit worked. Because then I was like, you know what? If he could do it, I could do it. Simple as that. That is, yep. that, you know, when you do, when you watch pickup um, um, infields, you know, how a lot of guys get depressed when they watch infield videos. What I began doing is I began looking at, I began doing, watching those videos, but looking at it through their eyes. I'm like, mm. I like literally, it's like virtual reality. I looked at myself being in the eyes of them. Why did I do that? Why didn't I not do that? And I started noticing that the guys that were good were walking slower. They took their time more. All mm. of those things because I wasn't looking at it through their perspective. So when you do this and you get in their heads, you sort of are able to you download new habits, new ways of thinking, and you see that through the results. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. And I love it. They, you're just, you're a mad scientist. You're an absolute it's, mad scientist, and I love it. I yeah. love it because your energy is, uh, you can't really stop it. I've kind of, you know, you mentioned analogies before. And you mentioned actually how Da Vinci's, like to think in analogies and i think you and i are very similar in that way and that's why we uh you know that's why we vibe yeah, because yeah. we see the world in analogies and i think through metaphor in general we learn a lot better so in my coaching style with people in general i often just try and draw it to analogies as much as possible and with you the way that i feel you coming at me right now is that you're like someone's just grabbed like a bottle of coke and it's just like sh- just like shaking it as much as they could and just psh- I just mm-hmm. popping bottles. I feel yeah, like you're yeah. popping, but you're the living animation of popping bottles at the F1 Grand Prix, and you've just won first place. And mm-hmm. I love that energy. I love that excitement. I want to bring this into the craftsmanship now, because now this is actually where it dives in organically, because this is something that I've been personally very, very interested in for quite a few years now, is the idea of, and this is not to say, because have you read Gary Keller's One Thing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've, I've, yes. First chapter. So you know what that's about. Mm-hmm. So this is not me talking on that because there's obviously a time and a place to dedicate a extreme amount of energy into one thing. Obviously, there's there's a lot of benefits to that. But what I want to speak more on is this Renaissance type man mentality, this craftsmanship mentality where you're working on several different things. Maybe it's only two things. Maybe it's three things. But there's a few. But they're very separate. They're very different angles. For you, spoken on the books here, right? And that's like, if you want to look at that as wisdom acquisition and internalization as to, especially the way you do it, especially through not just visualization, but an actual embodiment of what this person's feeling, what this person is going through. That's in, that's interesting. That's very interesting. And then you've got through the dating. You've learned a lot through that as well. That's a very separate angle. But then also, as well, to tag in your craftsmanship of spirituality. Yeah. All right, because this, this, this is a big journey for you. So dive in on that for me. What's that been like? What's that journey of crafting your own spirituality been like? Well, like, I, I, ever since I was a little kid, I was afraid of going to hell. So, mm. <laughs> so I was like, I need, I need to know this dude, Jesus, man. I need to get to know this dude. Um, 
And 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 what the thing is that like a, a big part, like something that Robert says is that a way to know your calling is when you meet a master, you react to them viscerally. You sort of have a deep admiration for them. It's something in you that's that's connecting with them, you know? And 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 you gotta really look into that. A big part of me was when I was a little kid, my cousin Gregory, he was a he was a he was a an evangelist in the Dominican Republic, and he was known to be like like you know, I, you know some guy. I don't believe in God, but it, it, some of the things that I that I've experienced it makes makes me sort of reconsider that. And when I met him, you could sense the aura in this dude. You sense it. You're like this dude is different, you know. And 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 because of that, he used to tell me he would pray for like six hours a day, read the Bible five hours a day. And I was like, you know what? I want to do that shit. You know? So I began doing that shit. I, I was reading and studying the Bible for three hours a day and deeply into it. And then, and, and, you know, I, I stopped going to church, but I, I was always into that spiritual spiritual part. You know, I started meditating and in order to get better grades because I couldn't focus. So I started meditating mm-hmm. with binaural beats because binaural beats help you focus more. So mm-hmm. I was like, all right, let me do it. But then I was like, let me do it by myself. And then boom, I started meditating because of that. And, and so the thing is about spirituality is that it requires an open mind. That's the thing about spirituality. You got to have an open mind because just looking at it looks a little crazy. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and a big part of studying also spirituality, which is inevitable, is the pain. Something's got to make you feel better when you get rejected by a woman, you know. And, 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 and that's, that's a huge part of it, practicing mindfulness, observing your breath and stuff like that. And it also helped me with, with, with addiction and, 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 like, and, with, and with just almost everything. It just came together, you know. It's, you know, and, and, and it's kind of funny that you mix the dark tactics with the spiritual side and stuff like that. But Contrast. that's, yeah, but you know what? That's human because, you know, in the book Sapiens, and he talks about how, he says when you look at humans and that, and the fact that they slaughter, they used to they used to kill the, the old people, you know, when when they got too old, they used to hit them in the back of the head and kill them, or they used or they or they um or they completely did a genocide on all the Neander- Neanderthals, but well, fuck yeah. the few of them, they, you might say all oh, those humans were bad. He's like no, they're humans just like you, you know, and when you get a mix of the spiritual and the darkness. What you're seeing, and that's not because I'm a special dude, but what you're seeing is 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 a, is a transparency of of human nature, you know, and 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 it's inept. Like if a person who fully expresses themselves are those who fully pull out their negative and positive sides equally, you know, you can't, it just can't be one balance, or else that means there's a concerted effort to hide the other side, you know, and then that's and, the polarity. Yeah, exactly, dude. You. When you mix both polarities, you find new discoveries. You know, there are some things in this world that just haven't been connected because the right person hasn't come along. You know, and and, and every and any everyone your everyone's everyone's interest is unique. How, why are people not unique? Not because they're not they're not actively trying to be unique. It's because they're not following their inclinations. Mm-hmm. They're not they're not observing their, the things that they suppress. They're not looking for things. They're not following their curiosities. Everyone has has unique has un, has has unique curiosities. You might like spirituality, but you might like Sun Tzu more than I do. You know, you might like book. You might like um, um, poems more than I do. So your perspective will be different. And 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 that knowledge connected with something I know, you will find new things as opposed to me connecting it with the things you. It, it, our discoveries will just be completely different. You know. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. And you, you kind of breezed over something that I want to track back to because you mentioned the heavy Christian upbringing and studying of the Bible, but then you, and then you kind of fast forwarded to meditation. Yeah. At what point, if it, I'm not sure if it has enlightened me as to whether it's completely left you or if it, it did leave you at some point, when was the decision that you made to relieve yourself of the idea of there being a omnipresent god being as in the man with the white beard so to speak yeah i mean it was a gradual you know it, it, especially when you believe in something it's 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 more like a gradual thing that happens you start getting bored um you know people you you know it, it was just gradual i stopped wanting to go to church and then i started listening to information and yeah i don't know when it happened it just happened you know so it wasn't a struggle for you it wasn't like a big <laughs> battle no, it wasn't. It wasn't a struggle. You know, I'm very open. I'm a very open-minded guy. 
Um, and and you know, it, it was it wasn't like one day I woke up and I stopped believing, but one day I woke up and I realized I stopped believing. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, right, really- right, 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 right. That's actually quite a, if you stop and think about what you just said, it's quite interesting. Why? Even just me processing it right there, it's, 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 a, it's a different shift in mentality. It's that, and I think this is kind of applies, applies to all of life. You want to look at it in many different areas that a lot of the times things don't happen in epiphanies. They don't happen necessarily in satori-like moments, like an awakening and we're just like, holy shit, all of a sudden I get it now. All of a sudden this happens now. But one day you might realize through the process of work, through the process of craftsmanship, each and every single day, sharpening your blade. And you wake up and you look back on the past year. This is what I found through cold showers. For, I don't know the exact amount of days, but I, I could actually go back and track at least where I think it began. Because it was uh, on one boot camp I did earlier in the year. In very much, I think it was it was either March or April. I think it was March. I can go back and check the video, but I know at that point I definitely started doing cold showers every single day, like every single morning without cold fail. Chialis? What's that? Cold showers. What's that? Oh, uh, cold showers, as in shower, but it's cold. Oh, Super cold. Okay. oh, oh yeah, you talk about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like freezing your balls off in the shower when it's uh, winter, that type of thing. So. I know I'd been doing it a bit before that, but I can definitively say because I remember that boot camp morning that I was like, fuck, I don't want to do it on boot camp morning because I like to be relaxed, but I know you're fucking doing it. So I know, I know from that day. So that was like, like March or so. So ever since March, there's not been a single day in my life that I have not taken a cold shower. Now in Australia, like right now you're looking down at me like it's sunny. It looks, it's getting hot. Yeah, but we still get winter. And yeah. for us, it might not be New York winter. Like our winter probably seems like shit, like piss shit to you guys because you guys have got snow going down the streets, which we don't have. But for us, it's cold, right? So getting up at 6 a.m. when it's dark, it's black, and you got to force yourself into that cold shower. And you don't want to do that, but you force yourself to do it anyway. And you know you've got to do this every single day. Otherwise, really, you consider yourself a piece of shit. Now, it's not like each and every single little cold shower, you have this awakening and this satori light moment where it's like, I am in full control and mastery of my being. It's not like that happens every single morning. But one morning, three months later, four months later, you look back and you go, holy shit, I've been doing this every single day for three months. And it might just be a little, a little thing ticks that, oh yeah, this cold shower is easy as shit because I do it every single day. And it's not that it ever the difficulty ever leaves you. There's always that moment, the the second before you just go head first into that water where you don't really want to do it. And, mm-hmm. and I've been doing this for yeah, what's it? It's over half a year now. Over over half a year, yeah, almost getting to nine months, something like that. Crazy. So it's it's always still there. It's always still a little bit there. And like I used to. I used to do cold showers on and off before this, but never every single day. So that's what it's been like. And what you were talking about there, where you were going, when I asked you about, did the perception of a omnipresent, omniscient being in this idea of God, did that ever leave you? Was there a moment where that happened? And you go, well, it didn't really happen in one moment, but one day I woke up and realized Mm-hmm. And you know what I mean? It's like, it's this process of work and this process. And cause that for you came through a process of discovery mm-hmm. process of self-exploration. Yeah. And it's, it's the outcome is anticlimactic. You know, it's very anticlimactic when things happen, when you find out you made it, you, you it's not like you, yay, you celebrate. You just, Oh shit, I made it. All right. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a party, but I guess not, you know, like, it's so just why happened. were you so worried about the outcome? You know, yeah, people well, are so well, worried about the outcome. Yeah, well, that happens when you work out, you know, you don't, you notice yourself, you know, it's, it's like, it's never one big moment, you know, mm. no, the, the mm. big moment is a picture, you know, <laughs> when people see the before and after, but for you, it, it was never a big moment. It's just, it just happened, you know, like Da Vinci, Da Vinci didn't just happen, you know, it's, it was all moment to moment, intense study, intense curiosity, accumulate that in, in decades and you create that. 
you know it's it's, it's an intensity of, of 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 focus and then that that just makes those kind of changes and and that intensity doesn't lead to instant changes only superficial things happen instantly you know real things happen over time you know this the universe happened across billions of years you know mm. Dude, like the biggest. Uh, any anytime somebody tells me they want something fast, I know that they're not really in it. They're, they're not really in it. For it's sure. just how it is. When I go on YouTube and Google how to draw, and it says how to instantly fix your artwork, I don't look at those videos. I just don't, because I'm like I don't I don't even want to consider trying to find something that's instant. I want something. I want a ten year plan. You know, I want a ten year plan. That's that's you know. Don't try to get laid tomorrow. Try to get laid in ten years. You there's more weight. There's more. This is the beauty is that when you have a 10 year plan, you see, when you're trying to get late tonight, every failure hurts. Oof. You know, when you're trying to when you're trying to build a life in, for 10 years, you have more patience. You have more perspective. You take no easily. It's you. You, you have so much move, move, um, movability. It's it's crazy. You know, ten, it's a yeah. big plan. Big, it's, but it will come. People don't believe that 10 years will come. You just got to have it. Oh, and it comes quick as you get older. You know, to uh-huh. young dudes and young girls listening to this, they might think like a decade seems like a lifetime. But once you hit, I mean, you could speak to this even more than, than I could, but it's something I've found over the last couple of years. It's like, holy shit, time. As each year goes by, it's almost like, especially as you start to do more in life. And if you're a dude like myself or like yourself, who's crafting on many different angles, what you start to notice is that, holy shit, this time, you said it before, it's almost like there's not enough hours in the day. And that accumulated over weeks and months. It's like, it's like this year in particular, it's almost Christmas, man. It's almost Christmas. Yeah. And you can remember what it was like having that bag to ham last year. So that's Dude, crazy. I made, a, I made a video about that. Like literally last year at the same time, like literally like um, last year, I made a video about how time flies November 2nd and without knowing it and that's it about that too how time flies now it was very weird if a, a subscriber found out that i did that I don't, i'm like you are creepy and observant you know Jesus. <laughs> and, and, yeah dude, no, today's, today's like november 3rd here yeah yeah no dude let me tell you something man and this is this is what excites me a lot because when people think about getting you see the ultimate power comes through mastery ultimate power in life comes through mastering nobody there are things that da vinci could do that nobody today could do there are some craftsmen in Egyptian times that it doesn't matter how how outdated they are, those skilled, there's something that they could do back then that we just cannot do. Oh, the you pyramids, know? man. Pyramids. Like skills. Skills is something you just ca- cannot replicate, you know? So, so with people, you see, the human brain loves making connections. How do you make connections? Making connections is learning. You know, you, 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 you creating connections. It's addicted to that. It's addicted to creating good and bad connections. Bad connections happen when you allow it to atrophy. Good connections happen when you put will and intention to it. The thing is, is that the biggest obstacle is time. I'm too old. I'm too young. It'll take too long. 10 years, 10,000 hours. Okay. Look at it this way. This year went pretty fast, right? It went mm. pretty fast, right? So, the older you get, the faster time goes. So that means that me learning how to sketch properly is gonna go by really fast. I mean, I'm I'm gonna be I'm, it's gonna feel like four years or five years or ten years, right? And, and so it's kind of like that should motivate you, not like oh I'm gonna get old fast, nah bitch, you're gonna get old fast. You're gonna learn fast. Like it's gonna it's gonna feel like you're learning faster because the flow of time is gonna speed up, you know. And then that's the positive thing about the flow of time is that it's a positive thing when you're looking at it from this perspective. Dude, think about that. Like 10 years goes by fast. You could master something in 10 years, right? And then the next 10 years is going to be faster. So now you could master something else. That's what Da Vinci did. Da Vinci would put down his stroke, his brush stroke, because he was tired of painting. He was already a master at it. And, and he, started, he started drawing how to, create, how to create a flying object. Or he started drawing or learning about the tongue of a fucking woodpecker. He would learn about that, right? Mm. And and the way he would do it is that he would just immerse, deeply immerse his studies on that. He would study the he would study the about optics and lights and how it affects objects, deeply into it. And he would master that, right? And, and then he'll go back to painting and apply what he learned in painting. So you know, like like time would just speed up. Don't be a victim to it. Use it. You know. You mentioned something before as we were talking about this flow of time and how we got onto all of this. 
when you talked about a 10 year plan, I couldn't help but smile because one of my favorite videos that I've had the pleasure of creating and that I've been able to put out to others. Hold up, you still there? You got me? Scott's I'm here. getting a little bit. Oh, yeah. you're there. Okay, yeah. And uh, one of those videos has been what I titled the 10 minute versus 10 year mindset. And in mm-hmm. that video, I pretty much described a lot of what you described and it just couldn't, I couldn't help but smile because guys that get into this journey in particular, you know, whether it's because, and often the case is that they get into it because they, at first they want to address that social side of their temple. You know, they want to have more sexual abundance. They want to go from that two, three, four out of 10 on the scale of natural social ability and take themselves up to a seven or eight and be able to walk into the club, be able to go out into the street, meet that girl they want to meet. But with those goals and with those desires, they often do not match the right actions, right? It's fine to have that envision of where your life should be. And I love the visualization. I love it when when a guy comes to me and says, yeah, this is where I want to be. And that's something that I always ask everyone who's a first timer with me, you know, where do you see yourself six years, uh, sorry, six, six months, a year, five years time, 10 years time, what type of person do you want to be? Right? You know, people ask, typical interview like where do you see yourself in five years no i'm not so concerned with that i'm more concerned with who do you want to be Mm -hmm. and what type of person do you want to be now you often find a mismatch an incongruence between whatever that is say it's they want to be an an arbitrary seven or eight out of ten which basically just means that they want to be able to have no fear or at least be able to manage their fear and going towards a girl that they're attracted to and be able to walk through their life in that manner. Cool. But then I say, okay, so describe to me the past month of your actions. Oh, well, I went out maybe once a week, maximum, once every second week. I'm like, okay, okay. I won't make too many judgments yet. Tell me what it was like when you went out. Well, well, I was really just looking for the hot girls. I was really just looking for the hot girls. I wasn't really concerned with shifting myself into a nice creative state and where I can interact and engage with everyone so that I feel like actually self-expression doesn't have a timer, doesn't have a time limit, doesn't have a designated environment in which that, oh, within these four walls and with this specific person, then I need to be creative. Then I need to be sexually attractive. I know I wasn't doing all that. I forget about all that. I was just laser targeting like a shark in the water with blood trying to go out to these hot girls and trying to get that to work. I'm like, well, listen, man, look at what you've just described. You've described a 10-minute mindset in which, like you said before, D, is that, yeah, I'm just going out because I'm trying to get laid tonight. I'm like, listen, you can try that, but essentially what you're doing here is that you're seeing a massive river in front of you. And the river is 100 feet wide. And so you rock up on this river and you look at that going, yeah, I can jump that. I'll jump that. Let me get a run up. I'll jump that. And that's most guys' mentalities. That's the 10-minute mindset. I'll jump that. Now, no one's going to be able to jump a 100-foot wide river. How do I approach that shit? I say, hey, listen, I see this river for what it is. I see the challenge for what it is. So I'm going to take my shit a few feet up, and I'm going to build a bridge. Mm -hmm. Now, it's going to be slow. It's going to be slow as shit. It's going to be painstaking. It's going to be one plank at a time but I'm going to build this bridge. And the best thing about building the bridge is that it's guaranteed that if you stay to this process and you stay the course, you stay the path, you walk the journey, I will get to the other side. Now it's a hundred foot river. It's got to take some time, 10 years, 10 years, but at least along the way that I'm not going to get wet. I'm not going to drown myself along the way. I'm not going to find myself disillusioned and depressed because I'm not seeing results, which is what the 10 minute mindset has. It forces you into that place of self disillusion because yeah, if you attach yourself to that immediate get anxiety, anxiety, you attach yourself to that short term get, of course your actions. And this is where the alignment between action and mindset has to come in. Mm -hmm. You it's, I would rather you have an alignment with a negative action set and a negative mindset because at least it's aligned. At least there's no confusion. What do you mean by that? Yeah, Yeah, let me explain that. Yeah. At least there's no confusion or delusion there. So what I mean is that, take that analogy with the river. 
So you got this guy who goes, who can still see it's a hundred foot river. And the hundred foot river is, yeah, let's take it. Let's bring it down to real terms. Let's just say that's a guy who's super socially inept. You know, it's like two or three on the scale of 10. 10 being absolutely natural, zero being a hard case. He's two or three, right? And he goes, all right, well, I need to become an attractive male. Now that's a, that's a, that's a hundred foot river for him to jump. Now what I would prefer for that guy to go through if he is going to take the 10 minute mindset is just acknowledge that he's taking a 10 minute mindset. When he comes to you or I and describes his night and says, or the last month and says, yeah, I was going out just trying to get laid every night, only approaching hot girls and getting destroyed every single night because of that or whatever night that he went out destroyed because of that, went home in my journal, cried, right? Complained to all of my friends, just got beat down on life because of that. And I acknowledge it was because I was taking this short-term, extremely external, egoic-based results mindset Mm -hmm. because there's no delusion there. If he can acknowledge that my actions were aligned with this type of mindset, then there's no issue because, and when I say no issue, there's no issue in the sense that, oh, at least he knows where he's at. Mm -hmm. At least he's aware of himself, self-knowledge. He knows himself. I can work with that person. You can work with that person. But it's the disillusion. It's when someone says, no, no, I'm operating on the 10-year mindset. Mm-hmm. I'm op- Adam, I'm on, that, I'm on that bridge building process you were talking about. Yeah. But then I say, okay, show me. Show me the actions. Oh, but he still says, I was going out with that extremely external, egoic-based action set of, okay, targeted interactions with only the most attractive girls, which of course will shut him down because he has not learned how to be free from that and be mm-hmm. free from the anxiety that comes from that. So that disillusion right there, that is what I'm most concerned with getting guys and just people in general, girls as well, to just be aware of themselves. Be aware of, do your actions map to your mindset? If they don't, then that is more of an issue than if you were a complete complete 10 minute At least the 10 minute who's got 10 minute actions at least his mind is, if his mind is on the 10 minute mindset, we can fix that. We can change that and we can make him realize, okay, if, let's switch to 10 year, but your actions are going to have to switch to 10 year as well. He goes, yeah, that makes sense because I wasn't confused about that. Mm-hmm. It's the guys that come to me that are confused and they go, no, you know, they're like, really out of, really? I need to go ahead and start at 8 p.m. And I need to speak to every single person I meet on the street on the way to the club. And then when I get into the club, I need to speak to the barman. I need to speak to the, the girl who's stamping me, who's as I'm going in, the code check. I need to speak to that random dude who's standing there with his little beer, right? Mm-hmm. And maybe he's got a couple <laughs> friends who are scared as shit as well. I need to address him. I'm like, yes, but you don't need to address him because you need to be best friends with him. You need to address him because you need to map your actions to the mindset that's going to lead us to your eventualized action of desire and your desire is that you want to be a person who can be attractive in all environments not Mm -hmm. just okay now it's game time game time is life to me you Mm -hmm. know what i mean yeah yeah it's 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 it's, you see that's a problem is is just people don't have enough patience and lack of patience is just lack of perspective you know they're not they're they're not they don't they're not they don't have a they don't have a foot in reality. They're just guided by by the desire to get or the, by the desire to fill their needs as opposed to express themselves, you know. And ten year plan requires an expression. It requires you to put in the work, to build yourself up slowly, and to stop thinking about short term, which is a bad habit habit mm. that people have. You know, we're all being told instant gratification, instant that, instant this. And what gets it, well, see, what gets it is a lack of understanding what you want. You see a hot girl and you think that's what you want. You see a girl with two girlfriends and you think that's what you want. But in reality, why didn't you think of it? Just because he has it now and you see it now you want it. You know, if you really wanted it, you would have wanted it before you saw it. You know, Mm. you know, and it's kind of like he was very aware of what he wanted. And so he was like, All right, I want a girl. I want two girlfriends, and I want them to know about each other. And somehow he did it. 
because he was very specific. Oh, he got fucking lucky, you know. But the thing is, is that a lot of guys they think they want something, but in reality, they just don't want it. When the, it's really envy. They just want what other people want. You know, and and they just want to get good at pickup, at club game. Even though club game is not for you, you somehow struggle with waking up in the morning. You just want it. Why? Because you're just looking at other people. You know, you got to find out what you want in your lifestyle. Be very specific and not just specific, but also envision how you feel. How do you want people to react to you? How do you want people to respect you? Don't just look at the girls wanting you. Look at how they feel. You know, feel that they have an anxiety to want to see you. How do they react to to you not being there? You know, and, and that's a part that people don't really look into because they just want superficial things. I want the girl. Okay, how do you want to get the girl? How do you want her to respect you? How fast do you want her to respond to you? What will you and will not accept from her? Those are things not specific because, again, they're just looking at surface level. What I want is, is is I envision myself having a life in when I'm 40 where they're the ones that are coming to me. I don't know I'm putting any effort. And you know what? This cannot happen if you have a two-year goal. This only happens when you build something of value. People will want to come to you. And it takes time. You know? So when you give yourself a 10-year plan, you have more space to maneuver. Your thinking is more dimensional. It's more rooted in reality. There's more patience, and patience is the biggest cause of failure. So you already eliminate the biggest cause of failure. And the beauty is that you rely on other people's lack of patience. While everyone is focused on one, they shouldn't be focused on you on the right route. There's not a lot of competition there. You know, that's what I, that's my advantage is, is the perspective. I know what you, you may have more experience than me, but I'm starting out fresh and new. And you started out with bad habits because maybe you wanted to draw fast. And now you started, you started sketching Dragon Ball Z. I, on the other hand, I'm sketching how to draw a freaking line. I'm learning how to draw a circle. And my improvement may not seem as fast as yours because you're just drawing big so you can put it on Instagram, right? No, my improvement is is real. Is 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 it, you're, I'm creating roots rather than the, the this, a flower doesn't come out before the root is created, man. You know, and, and so that, people are not looking. They're not looking in nature to see how things really work. Shit first grows inside and then outside. It's just how it is. And that inside means not getting that girl today. It means being alone. It means reconstructing yourself and realizing you have a long way to go and doing it. It, it, The biggest cause of failure, dude, is just people don't want to put in the time, man. If you want to succeed, man, just have patience, have it go and give yourself 10 years. You could do so much in 10 years. It's, it's it's just almost it's almost guaranteed success, dude. Just think about that. Like just just give yourself ten years on something, and you're gonna be good. You, you just are. You give yourself ten years to be a loser, you're gonna be a real good loser in ten years. Mm. You know, so it's it's yeah, man. That's, yeah. that's a powerful point, man. That's a powerful point. And you know, when you said that, it reminded me of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Have you read Total Recall? Oh, yeah, that that's mean? a. I think that's the first book I read. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's inspirational <laughs> yeah. shit. And what's but what's inspirational about it is not is not getting to see all of his wins because we know about his wins. We know about the Governor. We know about the Terminator. But what was so fascinating about that book, and you know there's those books where, like this one, like this one, where you can't wait to get back to this. You can't wait to pick it up again. That's the same as Total Recall for me because I had – I was uh, unenlightened like most people about Arnold's life. I mean, I back when I was a young teenager, when I first got into the gym, it was because of the movie Pumping Iron. Mm-hmm. And and so, but that didn't show any of his upbringing as a kid. How do you? Uh, 20, 25. Oh, cool. cool. So when I was like 16. Mm-hmm. And, and I remember me, me and my boy Roy and uh, my brother Lou, we would sit there in the gaming room and we'll watch Pumping Iron. And that would show, you know, that showed Arnold when he was killing it. There was no storytelling of when uh, he was a little boy in Austria, or they didn't. It didn't tell him about how he's fucking up in the military and all these different things, right? And and from one from one challenge to the next, Total Recall, it gives you such appreciation for the ten year mindset and for this unwavering will. Just to no matter how many things go wrong, how many people tell him he can't do this, you can't do that, just get it done, and that he wasn't. A magician that these people that are we consider to be highly highly successful and you mentioned it before that were endowed or the perception from society is that 
the these highly successful people, successful people, they were always born with that quality. They were always going to be successful. It's just that, you know, however it manifests and manifests. But actually, when you look at their stories, it was a combination of will, determination, and patience. Not some magical, magical innate endowment that you or I don't have. And that's, mm-hmm. you know, we're talking about books. It's one of the biggest things I got from books and or reading biographies. It's like mm-hmm. reveal it. It just lifts the veil. Yeah, this the veil on people, you know. Yeah, it, it 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 makes it more attainable, man. Like, dude, again, like uh, the reason why people don't want to think about ten years or five years is because of the, the subtle fear of their own mortality. You know, like it, I froze. I froze, right? I froze. No, I froze? no, no, no. I, okay. no, no. You froze my mind. Did, okay, yeah. you didn't freeze that because what you just said was so good. Where I just hold up the subtle fear. What was it again? Say it of again. Your own the mortality su- of death, you know? The subtle fear um, of your own mortality. That's fucking yeah. beautiful, man. It, it, it manifests. My mind. Yeah, dude. It, it manifests itself in different ways. Like, it manifests itself in Halloween where you make a joke out of it because you don't want to see the reality. You know? Everyone makes a joke out of death, but they don't, they, they, they're, they're not really close to death. It's it's all being veiled. It's, it's you put in makeup on. Let me charge my laptop. One second, okay? Uh, Dee's just grabbing his charger, but I just want to, for you guys now, I don't want to cut this point because I just, what happened there was that because of Skype, sometimes if we notice the person's head doesn't move for a second, it's almost looking like it's frozen. But when he said the subtle fear of mortality, I froze myself because that was, uh, <laughs> That yeah. was something powerful. I've never heard a phrase that way because well, it's very true. You, I'm here. Yo, you're good. Oh, he's back. He's back. Yeah. Um, and 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 it, it, it's because you see the society we live in, we're all afraid of death. So you can't really show dead people. You can't. The, the the people who saw public executions, they had a real sense of time. They 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 had a versatile connection to time and their own mortality. That when you see when when you're exposed to death. In a consistent way, something in you changes, but some another part in you comes closer to reality, you know. And suddenly, you see time as weightless. You know what's going to happen to you. So now you're able to think long term because you know it's inevitable. You know. Now, anyways, I, I got to gather my thoughts on that. But the point is, is that ten years, you know that when ten years you're going to be older, you're going to be thirty or forty. Like like ten years means a changing of of of, of a number of the front number. And when you're 20, you're afraid of 30. When you're 30, you're afraid of 40. When you're 40, you're afraid of 50, right? So 10 years represents that. And people don't want to think about that because that means that they're getting older. So you repress that. So that's why people would rather think of tomorrow or a few weeks or a few months, but a few 10 years, I'm going to be old. How am I going to enjoy that? No, Picasso was 50 and he was getting laid like a motherfucker. <laughs> and, 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 and Picasso was... Dude, but just, just think about this part, man. I'm just telling you what, what I find fascinating is that a lot of people, when they look at Da Vinci when he was 19 years old, and he's like, fuck, he was 19. He was already creating massive pieces. Nigga. Yeah, he was 19, but let's measure age differently. Let's measure experience. When he was 19, he had almost already 10 years of experience of painting and drawing. Of course he's going to do that. It's not like he's just a 19-year-old. So he, when he was... 30 and he started and he started when he started working on um on becoming an engineer he had 20 plus years of painting and drawing and observing nature of course it's a long he, fucking time yeah, a long fucking time you know so you could do and then he was 30 and then 40 and he just started stacking and it carries momentum that's the thing is that it has momentum mm-hmm. where it's like this oh you're learning and then something and then, it's just how it is and when you look at the end result it looks impossible but when you live that life and you experience every second, it's not impossible for you. You believe it. And then when you actually read the biography, it's like it's like walls are coming down in your head. You're like, holy shit, this makes sense. Will I have done that? Will I have done that? That's a big part when I was reading Arnold Schwarzenegger's biography. I kept asking myself, what would I have done right there? What would I have done that right there? Fuck, I mean, I'm in, I'm in the military right now. What would I have done? Will I have kept working out or will I just accept that? You know, like I just asked myself and I'm like, where would I have gone if I was him? You know, and it's just great so, questions, dude. It's like it, you're not successful because of you. You know, it's all about you. 
And we can't accept that because it's not me because it's because he's gifted. That's why it's not me. He's gifted. No, it's you. No, it's you, man. It's you. It's it's just everyone was a baby. It, it, da Vinci at one point did. There was a one. There was one point when I was better than Da Vinci as a drawing. Uh, there was one point. Right now, I'm starting to draw, but there was one point. Maybe he was second day of drawing or third day. Yeah. There was a one point when I was better than him at drawing, and I oh, was. Yes. So it's kind of like I right, let's just uh, let me just think about it as that perspective. When he was nine, he started drawing. Let me just think I'm nine right now, right? And and and, and dude, it's like it's limitless the potential that you have when you think about it that way. It's such a great mindset. It's such a great mindset. Even when you were saying like, what decision would I have made? Mm-hmm, yeah. if I was in Arnold's position right there that's something that I do as well you know I'm very heavy into particularly Asian philosophy and specifically with samurai well actually just in general warrior class mm-hmm. warrior classes in many different uh, many different backgrounds so not just uh, samurai although samurai in particular but you know even just looking at Spartan mentality looking at Spartan mentality uh, New Zealand Maori mentality you know, the warriors from down there, just in general, the warrior classes of human society and how they thought and how they acted and how they did different. Like last weekend, you know, the movie 300? Yeah. One of the greatest movies of all time. I've seen it like 20 times. And me and my brother and one of his mates were watching it and we decided to put it on. And the reason why I wanted to watch it is because I just like, I just got an inkling that night. I'm like, yeah, I want to get fucking inspired by a warrior class. Let me watch this right here even though I've seen it 20 times, and that's when you know that there's something quite deeply entrenched in our psyches about that life. Mm-hmm. Because, because I know what's going to happen, yet I still get thunder waves and thunder shock waves of electricity through my body when I see the first time, the first time they're at the, the hot gates. Mm-hmm. And they're getting ready to take the first on wave, the first onslaught of just these Persian warriors just coming at them and there's just like even though there's 300 of them the front line is only 15 20 side by side and then they're backed up by 15 rows behind them and just putting yourself in that mindset of i trust the man next to me the left the man on my left we each protect the man to my left mentality like that like even just something as subtle as that when leonidas is describing to the I forgot his name, but the, you know, the shriveled up, deformed guy that can't quite make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's saying, listen, we, each Spartan protects the man to his left. And I read into that shit. I read into that. And then you see the visual of them taking that first onslaught is that because it's so real. It's so visceral, especially in the way that the movie was shot, that they, they really ma- let you marinate on what it's like to receive this horde of soldiers that are running at you with utmost intensity and you just got to protect the guy to your left. Wow. And to have that trust, that trust and to have that steel, that steel of nerve. And it's like, when I see that, and the reason why I've gone onto this whole tangent is because of similar to the way that you're like, what decision would I have made? What type of person, what type of person would I have been in that situation? And I remember the first few times I watched it and I probably would have bitched out. <laughs> I remember when, like when I was, cause I first saw it when I was like 17, 16 yeah. and that shit scared me. I was like, when I thought about that, what would I really have done? And I, I really mean like for all of you listening as well, really put yourself, go watch that scene. If you don't have the movie, just go on YouTube, you can find it, the hot gates battle and put, try and actually feel what it would be like to be in that front row, to be in the front row and have those people running towards you, trying to kill you. And there's hundreds and thousands of them, ten, or at least in that moment, several thousand. How would have you have been? How do you feel like your nerves would have played? Uh. Uh, would you have steeled yourself? Would you, would you have been the type of man that could stand there next to you? And the guy on your right, would you have been the type of man or the type of woman that the person on your right would trust you? And That's then you good. extrapolate that out to life. Mm. Does the man on your right trust you? Mm-hmm. And so I, I saw a massive similarity in the way that you described how you put yourself into those situations uh, with Arnold into how I, I use that. So I get that from anime. I get that from the warrior classes, samurai, all of these things. I feel like it's a great way of learning, at least for myself anyway. No, of course. Dude, you, 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 you get you, – it's, like it's, like it's like a weird way of downloading information. Mm. You can sense it. You can, you can really sense 
It's like it's like an outside perspective. You can sense it. Your body reacts to it. It's like virtual reality. You know, you could really sense it. And 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 that's and there's a there is information in there that is transferred to you. That's all pre-verbal. It's all unconscious. You know. Yeah. And the more you admire that, the more you think about it, the more you feel it. It you, your brain literally is 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 getting in contact with with a new way of thinking. It's like it's being upgraded. You know. And that's why when you think of when it's it that becomes part of your self image, you know, you slowly it's a slow process. You got to keep admiring it so that your brain could, could, could keep could say your brain could assimilate it and stuff like that. And you don't see it instantly. You, you just notice you, you you're more resilient. You know, you think about that. You want to read more about it and you learn more from them, you know. And that's the thing is that you have to admire. You see, it's, it's all about admiring them so that you can learn. That's the only way you can learn from them when you admire it because you can think about them more. You know, but that's how it is, though, man. I noticed that a lot, a lot of your videos. You, you hear, I hear a lot about like a whoo, and I'm like, all right, that's a warrior right there. You know, and 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 yeah, it, it's subtle, unique. Yeah, it's it's what makes everyone unique. Their their curiosity, and you follow those curiosities, and it leaks out in your material. You know, and and the more and the more you find out the things you like, the more unique you become, and the more unique your channel becomes, and everything because you you're not trying to be unique. You're trying to be yourself, and everyone is unique. You know. What? Something mastery. He says that whenever you see a master displaying his art, what you're seeing is somebody who's able to completely express themselves. They're not doing something. You, the better someone is, the more expressive they are. When you're playing basketball and you suck at it and you can't shoot, you can't do the move you want to do because you haven't put in the time. But when you're really good at it, it's like a fingertip feel. You're fully expressing. You know exactly what you want to do and you could do it. You know, mm. so with artists and everything, they can't. They, they want to be able to draw the Mona Lisa. No, no, no. Maybe that. Maybe that's not your expression. Don't try to. Don't don't try to think about the, what you want to create. Think about the reaction in you. Think about the reaction in people, and let whatever that is to create that. You know, you don't know what that is. You just gotta focus on what kind of reaction you want to get. How do you want to feel? How do you want people to feel? And just follow that. Use that emotion as your map, and things will unfold. Yeah. It's uh the mastery and self expression, what you said there. I can't think of anything more truthful. Mm -hmm. When you're looking at a master, when you're looking at a master, it is true self expression. I'm not trying to be anyone else, I'm not trying to emanate anyone else. It's just been the process of ten, twenty, thirty, forty years of doing this thing day in and day out and this is where they're at so of mm. course they have no preconceived notions of well this is how it should be done no because i know how it should be done mm -hmm. and in my coaching when i have guys on boot camps right my, in my system of teaching guys through three overall mindsets direct congruent authentic and that's the three principles that i live my life by mm -hmm. you know, that's the mindsets they need to keep in mind but in terms of tactics right there's it's very much structure. I give them scaffolding because I don't need them to regurgitate. I don't want them to regurgitate. Yeah. I don't want them. I don't give them lines to say to girls. I give them structure to insert their own self-expression because in a similar way to yourself, you will mm -hmm. not gain mastery in any area of the temple and the way that if you life through this temple, specifically when it comes to social, romantic, being in front of a girl that you like, She's blowing your mind. If you don't have mastery of your self-expression, yeah, good luck conveying those high-level mindsets, direct, congruent, authentic. Why? Because you are trying to emanate something outside of yourself. But if you embody those and allow them to manifest in whatever way, so you learn from Vinci, right? I'm learning and I'm learning from Musashi. You're learning from these different people, all right? And it's not like we try to necessarily be a 100% copy of them. You take that mindset, you take that feeling, that fervor for life, and then you allow that to manifest in however that's going to come out in your brainchild. Yeah, and, and you can't. And the thing is, you can't dictate how that comes out. Mm. You know? And and, and the thing, again, look, dude, the big part is when you people try. It's like artists. You see that in artists a lot. I'm not an artist, but I'm working on it. But they try to be someone, you know. And and the problem is, is that it's like it's like a child. You first got to learn to walk. You first got to learn how to talk. 
before you have a personality, before people see your personality. You got to develop into that. And, and, and Mastery talks a lot about that, is that when you try to cheat the process, people could tell. They could tell because it sounds like noise. It sounds like what everyone does. Every, so every dating coach sounds the same. People be like, you're trying to be cool. Let me show you this, right? This is me yeah. trying to be cool, right? This is not real art. This is just me trying to create something that to look cool, you know? And, and so it was this thing. He's just pulled a poster down of one of his, uh, off, off the wall. Yeah. And, and one of his I'm, drawings. If I'm trying to create art, what's going to happen is that, sure, you, you, you'll get superficial praise, but it's not, it doesn't connect with people deeply, emotionally. You know, when you create something that's of value, it creates an emotional connection. When you work on yourself fully and you grow in value, you will cause emotional connections. When you watch an amazing basketball player, you are in awe. And that's what keeps you coming back to it. When you read a book and, it's, and, it, and it connects at the core, that's because that artist was able to fully express himself because he had a, such a strong grasp of the fundamental. And he was able to go inside and what's inside and put it out effortlessly. That's the key, effortlessly, right? Because it can't be, it can't, the only struggle is learning the fundamentals. The expression, when you learn how to draw, it feels like you've always drawn. You're like, like oh, well, I didn't know I'm good. No, you gotta look at your old paintings and you see how good you got. You see what mm. I'm saying? It's very hard. So it's kind of like to them, it just comes out. And when you see somebody faking something, you can see the effort. You can see the thinking. There's thinking involved. There's no fluidity. But when somebody is themselves and just expressing themselves, they created themselves through deliberate practice, not through shortcuts, there's not a lot of thinking. There's not a lot of friction. And it connects with you emotionally, man. Like, when you're trying to learn a skill, you're trying to get at the depth of reality. You're not trying to, you're not trying to create something. You're trying to, con you're trying to show, re you're trying to give people a glimpse of reality. That's why when you watch, when you watch, a, when you watch an amazing painting or a good movie, you can't forget that. Why? It's because they got they they got in touch with something that's real and they put it out there and it connected with you because it's already in you. You know, mm -hmm. like it, it, it's it's if it doesn't create an emotional connection, you're still not there. And, and the thing is, you can't force it. You can't force being there. You just can't. You know, I, I can't create beautiful art. But if I, I give myself 20 years, it's impossible for me not to create beautiful art. It's it. Da Vinci, you could just say Da Vinci draw something. It's a, it's a masterpiece because it's just himself. He's just expressing himself. He, he took the years. Hmm. He's just doing him, yeah? <laughs> See what I'm saying? It's crazy. Yeah, I love it. I love what it. happened? No, I've got a question. I've got a question for you. Mm -hmm. Because we've been speaking a lot about mastery here and I'm a big macro. Or I'm, I like to shift gears in terms of perspective. I like to go from macro to micro on everything and uh, especially in podcasts where we can do this. And one thing that I love about Life Perspective, and you're really good at doing this as well, is drawing out major perspective. And on the line of mastery, you know, when your life's done, if it's a vision, even if it's just a desire and there is no vision, what's mastery going to look like to you when your day's done? Well, man, it, I, to me, it's, it's, it's more of a reflection of like the human potential. Because I was a late bloomer. You know, I started late. Mm. So it's kind of like it's 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 gonna be more of a a, a a a. What do you mean by that? Okay, give me give me a better. Yeah. So visualize it, ground it in. Because I was talking to uh, I was on a podcast yesterday with Belku, aka Mario, and I asked him because we talked a lot about happiness, and I asked him because we talked a lot about it, and I said, just like I want to do with you here, it's just a just slightly different subject, slightly different topic. And I said, you know, you're like you're 90 years old. Right? And you're about to die. Mm -hmm. What is happen? What does a life of happiness look like to you? Mm -hmm. So, if you just want to take that example, you know, you're on your deathbed. Like your your day to die has come. Yeah. Your numbers up. And when that day has come, what does mastery look like to you? What is to, a life me, of mastery for you, Ben? To me, is it's 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 a life of deliberate practice and and self expression. You know, the soft and the strong, like the soft and the, and the, and the, and the hard, like it's, it's easy to self-express. It's hard to build yourself up. You know, it's, it's easy to express your skills. It's hard to, to, to acquire skills, you know, play hard, work hard. So it's, it sounds so cliche, but 
it's it's i'm gonna think back and i'm like fuck i did it i i i cannot believe i actually got paid for that shit <laughs> no nah, not that one but dude i be honest with you, I, I told you about my ayahuasca trip right uh yeah we talked about it last time but for yeah. those that haven't heard it yeah and and, and well I, I went to Colombia to stop smoking weed not, not not the place to go for that right and i did and i did ayahuasca interesting choice <laughs> it's just a choice, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did ayahuasca there, and um, and there was one point when I felt the flow of time. I became an 80-year-old man. I saw myself becoming 40, 50, 60, and 70, 80. And I was like, fuck, right? And there was one moment when I felt I was about to die, not with fear, but because I knew it. I saw there, there's a moment when you're about to die when there's no more seconds left. Like, right in that second, right? When there's nothing left and you're about to pass over to you, all, to wherever the fuck you're going. You look back at your life and everything feels like a hologram because you have the only thing you have is memories. You can't, it's not like like right now. You're going to think of this moment right now and you feel the weight of the moment. When you're about to die and you think of this moment, it's going to feel like just holograms, like, sh- like shadows of, of what things used to be. And what I noticed is that when I, as soon as I, I got, I started like, I did that. Now when I look at older people, I see myself, you know, I, I, I see mm that that's going to be me one day. So now what I think is what I want to be when I get older is, is I want to say, man, like, you know, I mastered a few skills, you know, like, like, like I did, I, 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 I didn't, even though I started late, I still started, you know, and I had many years of experience and, you know, it's, it's more like, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a question that, 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 that produces emotions that are, are difficult to translate in words. It's more of oh, a yeah. feeling. Yeah, yeah. It's more of a feeling of, of of satisfaction. It's like looking at a work of art and just leaning back and like, oh, finally I did that. You know, yeah. it's it's a satisfaction, and you could die happy. You know, because again, dude, all people want is recognition. Humans want to be recognized. They want attention. If a child is not looked at, it dies. What you want is to be appreciated for who you are, and the and the and, and the peop- the things that people express out into the world is not who they are. It's all a facade. It's all a quick fix, quick makeup for the meeting in five minutes from now. What you want is for people to appreciate your true essence, and your true essence takes time to create, because we all just come in like a, like a bundle, like a, like a like a like a furniture. You got to build up. You got to put it together. It comes, but you got to build that shit together. And that takes a, a while. And when you build that up and you express it, people will like it. Mastery is something that people appreciate. I haven't seen a master at something that, that doesn't get the attention and that doesn't get girls. Girls come to mastery. They they come to the 80-year-old artist who's, who's the best in the world. They come to the... To, to the, to the the, to the intellectual who speaks at conferences, even though he's 40, they come to him because he's an expression of mastery. And it's not that I want the girls. What I want is to put my work out there and let it be. Because I, I'm really satisfied that I did it. And I know you're going to like it because I put the time in. If you don't like it, I still like it because I put the time in for that. You know? So I don't know how that looks. I know how that feels, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's a validation by the process. Yeah, it's something that I've Sense been uh, saying a lot to myself. Sense of self? Absolutely. It's mm-hmm. like you're validated by the process. You're validated through creation. And I was speaking of a girl yesterday in the DMs. She probably listened to this as well. So yeah. now and this is no this is no fault on her, but and I've done a whole podcast on this, literally a whole podcast on this. I'm not, I'm not sure what number it is, but you can type it in if you guys want to check it out on finding versus creating yourself. And finding versus creating your purpose in life. And one thing as I'm talking with this girl, because she's um, she made a pretty big life move earlier in the year in which she traveled. To, I'll try to be a little bit aloof with details just for privacy. But, you know, she moved. For, she's from Australia, like me, but she moved to a, another country just to, for a short, just for like a short yoga retreat. Mm-hmm. But then ended up falling in love with the culture there and ended up staying for half a year end up getting uh, qualified as a, a, a chef there and whatnot and you know was loving it and then has now come back she was like previously working at a job here in Australia something that she liked but not something that she was you know madly in love with and as I'm talking of her on the, in the DMs and she's going uh, you know what, what's it like for you right now and I'm like well at the moment and we'll talk about travel I'm like at the moment I really only travel for, for coaching because 
every dollar I earn goes right back into my business. I don't really do for fun holidays at this stage in life anyway. You know, it'll come. That time will be there, but it's not the time for me right now. And it's because I'm living my purpose every single day. And she said something in very, that was just the context. What I'm really getting at here is that what she's about to say. And what she said was that, and this is an unconscious thing. So I don't fault her. If she's listening to this, I don't fault her for saying this because this is how society has trained us. And what she said is that, oh, it's, it's so great to see that you found your purpose. Now, most people would listen to that and not have an issue. Most people would, wouldn't even glance at what that means. Mm -hmm. But to me, that strikes a real red X. That's a real thing for me where I go, no, there was no finding that purpose. It was created. Mm -hmm. That was created through what you and I have been talking about, which is the day in and day out self-expression of I'm going in on this life. I am creating myself and I will create my own purpose because I'm not going to rely on society to tell me how I can be gifted that or how that could be somehow stumbled upon. I don't know. Like you said, I don't know a single person, a single master, a single person of his life who was living fulfillment that stumbled across it. No. I can't think of a single person. Mm -hmm. No. It comes through creation, deliberate practice. It comes through all this intent, intent to live life. So I don't fault her for that. Like I don't, I don't, it's, it's an unconscious thing. If you're not deeply immersed in this style of thinking, I think because you and I are coaches as well, we think on a different plane as well. Not better mm -hmm. or worse. I'm always really careful to say this when it comes into terms of evolution. It is, but it, is. it, is, it is, is, but it isn't. Yeah, yeah it, it is what it is. Exact, well, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Right? It is what it is. Like I said, this about uh, evolution. I was talking with Mick a couple of podcasts ago about your social circle and about how having to cut out negative influences, people that are less evolved. And when I say less evolved, it is what it is. It doesn't make us better than them because we've been studying high consciousness material, working on our spirituality. No, we just are where we are. They are where they are. And one beautiful analogy that I heard, I'm not sure, it's definitely not mine. I can, I'm not sure who to attribute it to, but a great way of visualizing this we are where we are is that if you visualize every single human being in the world standing in a line just single file and you just are where you are in that single file you know there are people much much further ahead 10 mm -hmm. years ahead in that line and imagine this line of people is from the very existence of the first cell in this universe to the baby that was just born right now yeah. think of every single being in that single file you're just wherever you are in that single file Mm -hmm. so in that case forget about comparing yourself to others forget about judging others in the sense of i'm better i'm worse that person's more successful that person's least successful. well that person's just in a different pace in the line than you mm -hmm. right and you got to work your way through that line just like everyone else did yeah yeah it, dude it's it, it, it's all and then it's all how can i say this? it's a we're all just trying people want to compete with others and they just don't want to compete with themselves you know <laughs> They want to get what other people want. Oh, I want that. But when you compete with yourself, you know what that means? I got to I gotta get better today than I was yesterday. It's just how I have to be better. Now I want to be better than, 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 than this one artist who's been doing it for 10 years. No fucking way, dude. You're going to get depressed. Be better than you were tomorrow, yesterday. Because you that's achievable. You know? And if you trust the process, if you trust in long-term thinking... You, and, and you just believe in it and you give it time, it will happen. You, you, you just cannot, you just got to stop focusing on other people. For example, it's kind of when people, people who do art, right? And they look at other people's art and this is big. They get discouraged, right? Mm. Okay, yeah. fine. That's fine. Get discouraged. You just, the problem is that you just don't have the right perspective. You know, you, you think that came out of their ass. It didn't mm -hmm. come out of their ass. They, they, they have their own unique perspective. So, admire them and then say that you could do it too because like, yo think about anything that you ever did like youtube video having a youtube channel right like it's very hard to it's very hard to even get ten thousand subscribers it's fucking hard it's, mm. it's fucking hard right and before you actually got it and you thought of people who had like 10k you're like fuck man look at them but now you're in it it's no big deal it's not you know? 
it, it's, it's no big deal. And, and, and it's achievable because you did it before, you know? And so people who want things tomorrow, of course you're going to get disencouraged because you want it tomorrow. You know it's not going to happen. Let me put a bullet in your head. Not a, put a bullet. Let me put a gun. <laughs> I know what you mean. I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> and, and tell you, you got 10 years to to build up a skill set and 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 get good at it or get or become a 10 percent or even a one percent of course you're gonna do it and, and then of course people are gonna pay attention to you if i give you two years you're not gonna do it in fact you're gonna get disencouraged and may it may go into analysis paralysis give you more time you ju- it's just gonna happen i mean actually i would even i would even bet against you because not because you're special but because because you have time, you know, it, it's, it, it, it's just, it, it's, yeah. You said it right there. Not because yeah. you're special, but because you have time. Mm-hmm. And, and this is a, this is a thing where we're talking about time that I've loved to think about things in this way when we talk about time, because it's actually a paradox. There's two sides to that coin of time and there's two opposite ends of the polarity with it in which I think we both, we need to hold simultaneously which is that with time, after this bottle, after we're done recording this, you could step out into the street because you want to grab like a coconut water down at the quickie and then all of a sudden some guy mugs you and shoots you in the process and your day's done, right? That could happen literally after we finish recording this right now. And that's no lie. Yeah. 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 Especially in New York City. <laughs> now, New, actually, New York is not nearly as bad as people say it is. No. Uh, but anyways, the perception, it can happen anywhere, right? You know, a car jumps the curb, you're done, whatever. So when that mindset, you have this moment, you only have this moment. And really, there is only one moment, and that is right now. And that the next moment is just the moment. We like to play games and we like to say, and we, and we are playing games. When we, let's be real here. When we're talking about, and I'm asking you questions about mastery over long term, we're talking about 10-year plans. Mm-hmm. That is because as human beings, our minds are not equipped with the facility to be able to think and organize ourselves any other way. We have to be able to simplify and to be able to constrict our minds into thinking, oh, God, it's just too much information. How will I ever get anything done in this life? Well, let's create structure for thinking the way that we've done in this potter. So that's how people get shit done because we can structure our minds. But let's not deceive ourselves in that the moment is just right now. So when we say, and this is the grounding here, when we say, yes, you got time, but you also don't. Because you only have right now, mm-hmm. and you could die literally in the very next moment. Or you may have another 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years, depending on how old you are listening to this potter. So simultaneously, like you need to hold both ideas you see, Robert Greene calls that psychological death grounds. You know when Cortez b- burnt all the bridges? I mean, burnt yeah. all. And he was like, well, you guys can either fight or die, you know? So, he was a real motherfucker, man. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you. So, so and, 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 and when, you're, when you're achieving a goal, your lack of ability to look into the future is because of your, of, of, of your, feet, of your inevitable seeing yourself getting older. That's one thing, Okay. And, and your lack of connection to death also causes time to be dilated in the wrong direction. You think you're, you're never going to die, so you don't feel no urgency. You don't feel, you don't know that t- 10 years is not that long and it's going to come fast. So you feel like you have all the time in the world, especially when you're young. Mm-hmm. You have that illusion in your head. And so when you, when you have that, you sort of feel like I could do it tomorrow. I could do it tomorrow. So you, then you're 30, I could do it tomorrow. Then you're 40, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. But then also you could go the other perspective, right? And then say, I don't have a lot of time left. But also 10 years is a long time, you know? So, so it's, kind of, it's not a long time, but it's enough to master something, you know? It's sure. just, people just need to get into that mentality, man. Like, like it, that show, think about this, right? And th- you see this a lot in European countries, right? In the New York City, when, the way you see the skyscrapers or the way you see buildings that are being created, they try to build things fast. So you see buildings and they're nice, but then you go to Amsterdam or you go to Italy where, 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 where everyone was creating art, even in the fucking buildings. And, mm. and you'll see how beautiful it is because of the structure, everything, every little inch. There's thinking, there's creativity in every inch. You come here, you see buildings that are like fucking squares. Sure, that's nice, but they were just doing it for the money. 
There, mm-hmm. you see the mastery because you see every detail. Everything is thought out. You you can't just ha- you can't just do that when you just want something done now because you, you next year is when you could raise the rent. You can only do that when you're just trying to create the most beautiful thing. You know, and you want to show it to appreciate the world. It. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what pe- when you read a book and it connects with you, that means that person put in the time. When you read a shitty book, shitty books just means somebody didn't put in the time. So that means, yeah, yeah. The time you can sense, in this. You can sense it, right? You can sense it. You can sense oh, the no. time. You know, when I read Robert Greene, I could sense how long it took him. You mm-hmm. can sense the mastery. Either these are two things. You could sense the mastery, how long it took, or you could be more emotional and sense the supernatural nature, which which could limit you. Oh my god, he was born this special. Or you could be like, fuck, this took a long time. Oh, yeah. we don't want to think about that. We don't want to think about the fact it took a long time. Oh, oh, because that means you gotta work. That means you gotta take a long time too. <laughs> no, no, and you mentioned that with the physique, and you mentioned that with the progress pictures, right? We see from 2010 to 2012 in one moment you see Mm -hmm. that bang but that's not what it was for you and that's not what it will be for the 200 kilo overweight kid who's sitting there looking at that or he's going he's looking in one moment from overweight and terrible skin and just an absolute piece of shit right Mm -hmm. just being called what it is and then all of a sudden picture next to it in the same moment shredded jacked right looking fantastic in four year two year four year transformation but that's not what it is that's not what it was for him on the day-to-day no. that's not what it will be for you on the day-to-day it, it, and so everything is perspective dude, dude you don't in those pictures you not you don't see the self-doubt you don't see mm-hmm. the moment of, of of them saying to themselves maybe maybe this is just not for me you know i bet da vinci has self-doubt you just don't see it and you, you just don't see it but he has self-doubt you know, whenever, whenever you're achieving something, the most common thing that will creep up and the biggest sign that you're going to achieve it is self-doubt. It, it just is. You know, that self-doubt, if you, if, if you don't feel self-doubt, that means you're not, you're not trying, you're not fully expressing yourself. You're, you're looking for something short and safe, you know? Short but, and safe. Safe yeah. keyword there. Yeah, yeah. But 10 years requires you to think of something big and risky. It's not really risky though, because because you're you're expressing yourself, but you're trying to. The only risk is seeing what comes out of it. But it's for sure it's going to be great because it's it's just how it is. And when it comes from you, it's going to connect with people. You see, and, and self doubt, man, is, is is the key ingredient because yo, I doubt anyone has ever tried to achieve greatness and they didn't doubt themselves. They may say they didn't doubt themselves just for public consumption, right? Mm. But if you really look at their biographies, right? If you really talk to them. And if you look at your personal experience, you're going to notice that in the beginning, there's always a deep sense of self-doubt. And that's the price to pay. You got to look at the doubt and just close your eyes. Just trust mm-hmm. the process. You just, all right, yeah, whatever. Fuck you. Just, just keep, keep going. You know? Man. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's, and, and dude, and the way to sometimes to, to, to get back on, on the road is just, just think back of their failures. Think back and just say, look, they're also humans. You know, it's, it's, the brain has a way of limiting you. By giving, by giving, by by deifying people who, of greatness, that's a way of, of the brain limiting you, because it, it's it's kind of like an easy cop out to not put the work in. Brain says this is gonna take work, so this motherfucker cannot not be doing this, or else we're all gonna be struggling here. So let's just rather than let, rather than let him do the work, let's just give him the assumption that he was born this way and he won't do it. And that's why everyone thinks, especially of people who we admire, especially when we're young. Or the media says he's gifted. He's he's he just came out of nowhere, and uh, this is a big one. Out of nowhere, this guy came and did this. Nah, bitch, that dude was working when you didn't know him. That's he came out of nowhere because he was at, in his house working. That's why he came out of nowhere. You know, that's the part that that just people have to like focusing is on, on the dark parts. You know. Yeah, that's that's what I love about your your perspective. It's your perspective that I think is probably one of the most valuable things that anyone who's listening to this could have got from this. You know, we talked about a shit ton of high level <laughs> mindsets. We talked about many different things that would force a lot of people's brains to just go, right? Yeah. But if there's anything above all of that, and if I look at the tree, if, if this podcast, and because now you're the third guest that I've had come on, and, uh, you know, we're at episode 83, it's all solo before that. But if I look at the garden 
of guests now. And as that's I'm kind of how I'm viewing it, that within this temple of podcasting, there's a little garden and each little tree, each little seed that goes in is going to form into this tree. And the fruit that comes from that, it's like your tree is of the species of perspective. Mm. Because it's, 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 it's unique. It's unique in the sense that you, you're not a regurgitator. It's very clear where your influences come from, but you interpret them in your own way. And that's what, I've, that's what I fucking hate. This is a real emotion for me about regurgitators. Like when I see videos on YouTube or other speakers, public speakers or whatever, and you can just tell that they have just taken cliff notes from that person, from that person, from that person. And there's no actual uniquity it's probably not even a word, but you know what I mean. So yeah. like, there's no personalization. There's no synthesize, synthesization of this information, of this wisdom. And then, okay, what does that mean for me? And how do I go and live that myself and then export that out to other people? That's what I love about you. Because I can tell that you've got this mad yeah. scientist, crazy child within you that's just like a hungering, thirsting for all this wisdom. And then you bring it to yourself. You synthesize it and you put it out. So... This is where we got to wrap up this pod, oh man. But I just want to finish on this note saying that thank you so much for sharing all that you have incorporated in yourself so far and being so uncensored in bringing that forward. You know, that's what the last two guests and every guest that I come, that I hope comes on, can take from, can take from you, can take from, and can bring to, which is that, and for everyone listening here, is that listen to the way D speaks. Listen to the way that DJ just allows creativity to flow. With the people that I work with, there's many clients I have right now that what you have is what they are lacking the most. Self-expression, the ability to just think it, feel it, and export is something that you are absolutely amazing at, inspires the shit out of me, and I just, uh, I'm honored to have received that energy from you today, tonight for you in New York. Thank you so much, my man. And I would love to now give you that space and opportunity to direct people to where they can dive deeper on you, whether that's Instagram, website, whatever. And of course, I'll link it up in the notes, but I'll let people know now and, and I thank you. All right, cool. Thank you, man. Hell yeah. I like, you know, I like a good self-esteem boost, you know, but, you know, you can follow me on mindfulattraction.org or mindfulattraction2.0 on YouTube and the Lexus P on Instagram. But... I my I always I always tell people I I rather give book recommendations, read Mastery by Robert Greene. That and 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 it, it doesn't connect to you. That's fine. But you know the the, the first chapter of, of discovering your life's calling. I would highly recommend that because you know a lot of source of unhappiness is lack of expression. That's all that is. And we, when you're unhappy, you try to consume. When you're happy, you express. So that's all that is. You know. And um, yeah, man. You know, I want to. It's two hours in. <laughs> hey, beautiful. Hey, Jesus Christ, two hours in, there we go. Yeah, Joe that was absolute, that was, that's, when you, that's when you know you're in the floor. Yeah, Joe Rogan, that's that's Joe Rogan says to his guests, ooh, two hours only? We're already two hours in, holy shit. We don't know, because that was just such a flow, that was just flow out of a cannon, man. Mm -hmm. So yeah, don't worry, we'll, I'm sure we're going to get this again. I'm sure this is only, uh, this is one leaf on your tree within this garden soon. Okay, all right, guys, that's where we're going to wrap this up. And I wish you guys the best in your journey. Much peace and much joy. Ja. Word. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us in this absolute exploration of life, of the psyche, of the mind, of our sense of self, everything we touched on. It was incredible. I really thanked Alexis for coming on. Now, this podcast was brought to you by Boldojo.com, where you guys can pick up the ebook, book one-on-one -on -one Skype coaching, dive in on immersive boot camps, send me inquiries all through the website, Boldojo.com. You know, we're steamrolling with these guests and I'm going to keep them coming. And I really just thank you guys for being here along the journey. So uh, connect with me outside on the gram, Tang one you know, hit up D as well. Get involved in our universes. Dive deep on that feedback. I really appreciate that. And yeah, I wish you guys the best on your journeys. Much peace and much joy. Yeah.